Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Welcome to the latest The Beauty Triangle webinar. It's wonderful to have so many of you here with us to join and, uh, and be part of the conversation. I hope you're all happy and healthy wherever you're joining us in the world from tonight. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Francesca White, and I'm the founder of The Beauty Triangle. So this is our sixth webinar, and believe it or not, our 18th talk for the Beauty Triangle, but it's also the first time that we've ever addressed the subject of hair in a truly meaningful way. And I don't know why, perhaps it's the effect of lockdown on our hair and our scalps, or maybe it's the inaccessibility that so many of us are experiencing uh, when it comes to salons and stylists. But personally, I cannot remember a time when so many of us were lamenting at the behaviour of our hair. Fortunately, we have a brilliant panel with us tonight, including aesthetic doctor and regenerative medicine specialist, Dr. Anna-Marie Olsen, founder of the Hair Science Institute and the world leader in hair transplants, Dr. Cohen Go, and stylist and brilliant founder of Salon Sloan in Chelsea, Bell Cannon. And they're here with us tonight and they're going to be discussing everything that we need to know about our hair from proven ways to slow hair loss and possibly even reverse it to the things that we can do right now, right at home until we can get back to the salon. Um, as always, there'll be some time at the very end for a QA. and um, So if any questions do occur to you, please just drop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we'll do our best to answer those as we go along. Um, but before we get started, a very quick new um, recap for any newcomers. The Beauty Triangle was very much uh, born out of a need to get people talking about their health and well-being. Um, but it's also a way to connect consumers to the very best practitioners out there. So our monthly panel discussions always discuss a single topic um, and always with a panel of three speakers, hence we refer to them as our beauty triangle. Um, because I think we can all agree that when it comes to wellness, we are saturated with information. Um, however, there's a real need for genuine experts and genuine advice. So our aim is that these discussions not only open your eyes to the people who can help, but also proven science-backed solutions. Anyway, that is enough from me. Um, what I'm going to do now is to hand over to our fabulous panel. They're each going to say a very quick hello and introduce themselves. And then we're going to get started with the questions. So firstly, Dr. Anna-Marie Olsen, maybe you would like to say hello and, and get the ball rolling. Hello everyone from wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm Dr. Anna-Marie Olsen. I practice mainly from Harley Street, London, but I also have um, smaller practices in Mykonos and Athens and generally travel all around the world trying to take the best care I can of the people I look after. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, very nice. And Dr. Go, over to you. Yes, my name is uh, Kun Go. I'm a medical doctor, but I am also a scientist. My background is tissue engineering and stem cell technology. And I'm a specialist in hair restoration. And the latest development I will talk about it later is hair stem cell transplantation. I think everyone's going to be office, really excited. Yeah, I, we have an office in London, Amsterdam, but Paris, also Dubai, Hong Kong, Jakarta, and uh, somewhere else in the world. I uh, love Global to hear from your comments. Thank you, Dr. Go. And finally, over to Bell. Hi, thank you for being with us. Hi, I'm Belle Cannon and I'm founder of Salon Sloan, which is a boutique hairdressing salon in Chelsea. I have an amazing team of hairdressers and I look forward to you telling you all about looking after your hair at home. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so excited to have all three of you on the panel. You've all got such unique specialisms. So I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation. So thank you for joining us. Right, our first panellist then. So Dr. Anne-Marie Olsen. Um, Dr. Olsen is highly sought after for her hair optimization techniques. Uh, she travels around the world, as she mentioned earlier, and um, delivering those. And she also lectures all over the world on, on the latest sort of techniques and treatments. So um, yeah, we're that very, very excited to have her here with us tonight. Um, Dr. Olsen, maybe we can start um, by talking about what you're seeing in clinic. What, what, what is your perspective as an aesthetic doctor? Is, is hair loss something that we are starting to see more of nowadays? Yes, definitely so. Um, a year ago, the statistics showed that there is an increase of 95% hair loss observed 
worldwide. That means both in the Eastern and Western world. And what's even more interesting is that we have a 78% increase in younger people experiencing hair loss. And when I'm saying younger people, I mean even Generation Z. So people who are end of their teens. Um, that, but that's quite, that's quite scary, actually, to think it's like, Yes, and, and it's multifactorial. Um, a lot of modern lifestyle has to do with it. Uh, let's not forget that we live in, a, in the time of what I call double-click instant validation. You get to be judged on the way you look, and that is done through a quick image, Instagram, even more so through this time we're going now with lockdown. And that, that is a very interesting feedback we get with our endorphins. If we don't get validated that instant that someone sees our photo, we get very depressed. Being liked is very important for younger people. And th there have been statistics done uh, both in China, funnily enough, on an observation scale of 40,000 young Chinese people, but also Harvard University um, studying the students at Harvard University. And they found out that mm -hmm. the more people started engaging with social media, the more they experienced hair loss because stress increased. And that had to do with the instant approval they got through an image. Other very important factors that's of control quite are quite environment awesome. and diet. So, um, mm. you know, I know you and I have spoken a lot about things like veganism and that sort of lack of even getting good quality protein into your body as, as a sort of real trigger for hair loss right now. Exactly. I always say um, that hair loss is a symptom. So when we notice hair loss, our body's just trying to tell us something. And what our body trying to tell us when we lose hair is that most probably we definitely lack some basic nutrients. Humans evolved by um, mm. consuming meat, okay? We actually went from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens by eating meat. Depriving our body from meat actually puts, uh, gets our body confused. When our body's confused, the first thing it does, it stops feeding what it doesn't need as much. Hair is something our body doesn't consider important. It's more important to keep our brain going and our heart going and our lungs going, not our hair. So. For as exactly, much the body sort of disregards those things, doesn't it? Your hair, your skin, your nails, they're always the first thing to go when the body needs to prioritize something else. Exactly, and, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of fasting. I think fasting is great. So let's not be wrong. I believe in fasting. I think removing a whole group of food from our diet, especially when that is so important and relevant to iron and the iron is very important for hair, would definitely have an impact on your skin, your nails and your hair, for sure. And, and, and so interesting what you say about stress as well, because I do think that, that lockdown in general in this past year is, is going to be really manifesting, you know, did social media and talk about you know the hair cycle going in sort of three month cycles and I think it'll be really interesting to see what does happen to, to hair loss e even now even as we're sort of hopefully coming out of it I mean the other fascinating thing about hair from my perspective is, is how many things it symbolizes to us as well um, and I suppose for, from you you know you lecture extensively on this subject what do you think hair means to us on a psychological level so well from the beginning of time historically, and interestingly enough as well, pan-culturally, so across the cultures of the whole world, hair has always been a symbol of virility, fertility, beauty and strength. Let's not forget that um, Venus, who is the goddess of beauty, even when she was painted by Botticelli, so we're talking a long time later, one of the most, the first things we noticed is the beautiful locks of red hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but then coming to modern day, um, Andrea Gassi has been known for saying he lost quite a few tennis games when he started losing he, his hair. And I'm quoting yeah. him saying that losing my hair, I was experiencing like I was losing pieces of my identity. That's mm -hmm. how important hair is for people. And it's again- so ingrained in us we come back to what is called the hook. So it, it's a vicious cycle. If we feel that we are not liked, then we stress, we get inflamed, we lose more hair. The more mm -hmm. hair we lose, the less we feel we are liked, so on and so forth. So I, I believe that the importance of hair that, let's not forget there's certain cultures um, in the Far East where hair even represents status and noble descent. 
So mm. hair is almost key. <laughs> it's, it's true. And, and I'm sure you and I have spoken a lot on this subject as well, but we only get a couple of seconds to make that first impression, don't we? And as much as you said that health, um, that healthy sort of full hair denotes youth and fertility, actually, I think that thinning hair can often imply maturity and age. And, and what becomes quite difficult is when our sort of external age and our hair doesn't reflect the age that we feel psychologically on the inside. And, and that can be quite difficult. Exactly. But uh, from your perspective, do men and women health in the same way? No. Um, so men and women experience hair loss differently. First of all, as practically the way hair loss manifests itself. In men, it is more like balding, whereas in women, I would say it's an mm -hmm. overall thinning. The first thing a woman would notice mm -hmm. is that the parting in her hair appears wider, okay? Um, growing older, maybe the temples are thinner, whereas with a man, it could be a receding hairline, but also boldness in the crown of the head. So there is definitely a different phenotype, to use a medical term. So, so we observe yes. it differently, hair loss. And, but that happens because usually there's a different cause. The, there was a recent publication a month ago, I'm, I'm sure Dr. Go will have read it, uh, which is very, very interesting. There is now proof that female hair loss responds more to inflammation than male. So if women, if, if a female body is in a state of inflammation, it will most probably also experience hair loss, whereas a man will not. So all of those triggers that you spoke about, things like the stress, like the lack of sort of good quality nutrition, all of that can contribute to inflammation. Mm -hmm. and, and also with men, it can most generally... And, and, and what about the things that you can do in clinic? Because you, you offer some very advanced... Yes, sorry. sorry. Sorry, I lost you just for a moment there. Yes. What, were you, what were you saying about men? No, no, I was saying, for example, with men, a, a gen genetics has a lot to do with it. Whereas with women, that is not necessarily important mm -hmm. when it comes to hair loss. Okay. Um, so yes, um, in clinic, I do. I do offer a variety of treatments. As you know, generally, my approach to anything is, is a very holistic, bespoke approach. And whatever I am asked to treat and help my patients with will be preceded by a very extensive medical history. I'm not sure I can see anyone there. I mm -hmm. hope you can see me. <laughs> okay, because as I said before, hair loss, hair loss is a phenomenon. It, it, it demonstrates something's wrong. Until I find out what the problem behind this, I cannot really treat it properly. So primarily I will take a very good medical history very often, if we're talking about female hair loss, I might ask my patient to also visit a gynecologist. Uh, hormones play such an important role in hair loss in women. I will definitely uh, take a very detailed note of what they eat, they eat, their nutrition, mm -hmm. um, stress levels, stuff like that. I don't want to tie you with details. Um, however, as you know, I, I also am a great believer in regenerative medicine. I think the best way to to optimize the way we look is optimize what is inside us. So my, uh, my hair prejuvenation protocol relies a lot on a combination of peptides that stimulate your own follicles to become stronger. That, that okay. is, in an, I'm, I'm very happy to go to it into detail. Obviously again, because what goes on with, on, with our hair is a result of a multitude of things. So it also has to do exactly. with what we I might mm. most possibly either give some nutritional advice or sometimes even suggest some supplements. I will mm -hmm. most definitely give advice on um, treatments to do at home. Uh, I might ask my patients if they've been using um, hair extensions to probably give a break. I love hair extensions, mm -hmm. but like everything that's beautiful, every now and then we have to take a break of it. Um, and then that I would say. advise an in-clinic treatment, but also something to do at home. Okay, it's interesting. And, and you also have a, your own prescription lotion, don't you, which we've spoken about. So tell us a little bit about how that works, because I think that's really useful for people who are maybe starting to notice those early signs of hair loss. Yes, so I'm sure everyone has heard about Regain or Rogaine. Basically, minoxidil is something that has been used historically a lot to assist with hair loss. An important thing to, to explain is that 
anything I apply on a scalp will definitely not stop hair loss from occurring, okay? Hair loss will still happen. I can only affect the hair cycle that much by just applying a lotion. However, what I can do is strengthen my existing hair and maybe delay the effect, the natural pro process of hair loss while the more invasive treatments I'm having done are doing their job. Now, the great thing with a prescription solution is that it enables me to, first of all, design it around the needs of each patient. For example, minoxidil over the counter can be a maximum of 12%. I, I have created lotions using 35% minoxidil. Wow, that's amazing. There is another um, molecule we, we used to subscribe a lot for men called finasteride, which however, I very rarely prescribe because it has quite a few side effects. However, now um, it, it, going to a compound pharmacy, you can actually add some finasteride in the lotion you apply in the scalp. So you're not having the side effects, you're still having the result. By having this discussion, you're giving me the opportunity to share with you. I mean, you already know that um, exactly a year ago, I was speaking in Miami. I, I was honored to be invited there at the um, International Plastic Surgery uh, Conference. And I, I actually got an award for this because I, I suggested the term hair prejuvenation. So there is something I can do before people need to go and see Dr. Go or there is something I can do to help that when they go to see Dr. Go, the result can probably be the best possible. Uh, we, we all know- Your approaches are very complimentary and it's, and it's good yeah. to know that there's, there's you as the solution before we get to the surgical as well. And, and we've all heard about skin prejuvenation. It's something mm -hmm. that we've been discussing it's about- a huge buzzword at the moment. Exactly. And that means deal with something before it actually becomes a a problem. Nurture, mm. We need to nurture our hair the same way we nurture our skin. Mm -hmm. And nurturing isn't necessarily, which is also very important. I mean, using the right shampoo is important, but hair is much more than the shaft that we see on the outside. Actually, unless we treat the bulb, the inside, the outside is, isn't going to look good. When I, because I used to do hair transplants, as you know, when I used to do hair transplants to help my patients understand, and I don't know if Dr. Go agrees, I used to say that if you think of a tulip, okay, the follicle is actually the bulb that's underneath the soil, and then the tulip is the mm -hmm. flower that will come up. Exactly, the, the follicle is buried in the scalp. Exactly, but the quality of the soil, how much water I give it, you know, how much sun and humidity that soil gets will have a direct impact on how beautiful my tulip will look in the end. So that's why it's- not, It's such a good analogy. It's, yeah. it's not only about, you know, once the once it's popped out, yes, of course I need to water it, but that's a bit too little too late. <laughs> you know, it's, it's when it's still a bulb, what can I do? And I would say that that's what hair prejuvenation exactly. is. I mean, I don't know if that's helpful. And, and I think it's a really valid point. It, it's very helpful. I think it's a very valid point because it also means that we shouldn't be waiting until it's too late to be trying to address these issues. You know, as with a, with a lot of things that we're talking about in aesthetic medicine, it is all about prevention now. I mean, you, you mentioned hair extensions as, as something else that we need to be very mindful of. And I know that Belle will talk about this a little bit more in detail from her perspective as well. But Obviously, you do treat a lot of patients who are very much in the spotlight. And, you know, I, I think more and more women are relying on hair extensions just to, to give them a bit of a boost of, of confidence. And, um, and I know it's certainly helpful in things like a lockdown to feel like you've still got this sort of lovely, full, amazing hair. But, but what can we be doing from home to, to at least minimise the damage that, that the extensions are causing, do you, would you say? OK, so we come again. I'm a huge fan of the 5P medicine. Two of the P's are proactive and preventive okay so yes you do have your extensions it's beautiful i understand and obviously as i said before like everything else try when you can afford to uh, give your hair a break i would say mm -hmm. a two to three month break once a year however while you do have your extensions what can you do i'm going to use another buzzword because it's part of my home takeaway tip protocol anyway. I am a huge believer um, for home treatments with laser light, laser light treatment. I think like it's the LED, like the helmets that you can use. So, so there, there's a slight difference between LED and laser light. 
And mm -hmm. laser light has a much higher energy density, okay? So it does actually do more than an LED. So I think that's something very easy. Anyone can do at home. But you just sit there, watch Netflix, and you put this cap on, and it's sort of doing its magic. I won't go into detail on the scientific evidence behind how laser light works because it's a bit tiring for our audience. However, there is a lot of scientific evidence be behind that. Just think about it. It basically stimulates circulation. You stimulate circulation. Everything that's there flows into the root. Again, we're nurturing the bulb. Exactly. The it's just getting that blood our, going. The, the stronger our existing hair is, the easier it will be for it to carry the weight of the extension. Because basically, mm -hmm. uh, we are born with a DNA that says, my hair can only take a, that much weight. It's a bit like eyelash extensions. I put three more on top. It's a bit of a strain. The stronger my existing hair is, the less it will get damaged. Through the extension so i would say that is probably the easiest thing to do mm -hmm. and of course if you can have an in-clinic treatment once every three months while you're having your extensions that has to do with a, a a treatment injected in the right depth because of course anything you do at home will not reach the right depth of the follicle to again nurture your follicles mm -hmm. it's probably the best thing to do so it is that combination of the at home and, and the in clinic. And, and what about very simple things that all of us can be doing today? Is, is there any sort of benefit to, I don't know, like massaging the scalp? You spoke a lot about getting like, the blood flowing again. I'm thinking about the quick at home things we can all do until we can get back into the clinic or until we can buy a, a laser light sort of cap for, for our hair. So again, I think Dr. Go is going to agree with me. We're very lucky, <laughs> but the majority of surviving stem cells in our body once we are born is in our scalp. That is amazing, that, that's great. That gives us a lot to work with. What does that mean? That means that if I keep these cells awake, like I stimulate them, then when they're awake, they'll do their job better. It's a bit like we need to dry brush our skin mm -hmm. not to get cellulite. Why does that work? Because the circulation going. So definitely yeah. I'm a huge fan of massaging the scalp. That's very important. Mm. It's, it's like exercise or a workout for the scalp, isn't it? You know, just, just to sort of build, right. build that sort of blood flow and that resilience. And again, coming back to the analogy of the bulb of the tulip, it's very important also to get some air in. So we need to let our follicle breathe. Sometimes our follicles mm -hmm. get clogged mm -hmm. between all the products we use, even sometimes moisturizing shampoos. Mm -hmm. So inadvertently when something is moisturizing it will contain something that might clog the pore so once every two weeks mm. use a clarifying shampoo so do a treatment where you really clean your scalp I, I always say it should be scalp and hair rejuvenation the scalp is as important as the actual hair okay it's, it's the bed of soil mm. the, well, bulb the scalp is the bed for it exactly, exactly. so we need so i would say very simple obviously don't over pull okay so you don't break the hair that that, that goes without saying don't over wash we don't need to wash our hair every day but also don't under wash I, I have so many male patients who say i don't wash my hair because i'm afraid more hair will fall out that doesn't make sense either you know just and it's so true we see it come out in the shower and it's sort of like you know what do you do yes but actually what you see coming out of the shower hasn't come out that day you know to do a pull test is a different thing so mm. treat your your scalp as you do the skin of your face so keep it clean very clean once every two weeks okay massage your scalp if you can when you can afford to buy um a laser light treatment to do at home and that's about it part of my um scalp and hair rejuvenation protocol is i i usually create a bespoke lotion with mm -hmm. the right nutrients, I, I use a lot of um, peptides, but also some um, human derived stem cells and growth factors, so on and so forth, which I give to my patient together with a hair stamp, which, however, is a non traumatizing one. Okay, so, so a hair stamp, like little, uh, little needles. No, no, it's blunt. Like because a micro stamp. It, it, it's, a, it's a stamp, okay. but it's blunt, because needles, I think people can actually traumatize your scalp and then get the wrong effect so no it, it's a small exactly. blood stamp yeah. that they use to help the product the active ingredients in the bespoke lotion penetrate more in the right depth but that's what I would give someone if they came to see me but even if someone cannot come to see me at least do that uh, twice a week definitely use a clarifying uh, shampoo and, and do a good scalp massage
And then, if, of course, yeah. you can come and, and, and see a specialist. It's good. And very important, you know me, diet. Diet, diet, okay? A, a healthy microbiome, like your intestine has to be clean. You need to, if you feel that you're going through a period where you're fasting, so you really are not getting all the nutrients you need, make sure you get the right food supplement. I, must, I do bespoke supplements, however, any over-the-counter good food supplement is very important. Iron is key. High iron, mm. especially for women who are still menstrual, okay, because we lose blood. We need to have high and iron. And it's one of those building blocks of your body, isn't it? You just yeah, so you even if you don't want to make it complicated, you don't want to make it complicated, just take an iron supplement, but you do need to, to take a, a supplement. I, I, I love, love your whole, your whole approach, approach to her because it's also to holistic. Her because it's also and I think everything you said is really, and I think everything you've said is really. Um, thank, you so much, Anna Marie, um, thank you so riveting. much, Anna Marie. That was absolutely Thank you so much, Anna Marie. That was absolutely riveting. Any questions? And if anyone has any questions, leave them in the box, for Anna Marie. Then please just leave them in the box. To those at the very bottom. So we'll our next today. speaker. So our next speaker is Dr. Go, um, a world leader in hair transplants. Uh, Hi, Dr. Gay. Thanks again for being with us. Um, Dr. Gay certainly has the most advanced hair restoration technique I've ever come across. Um, Dr. Gay, thank you for being here tonight. You've been doing hair restoration procedures for about 25 years. So I don't know, from your perspective, would you say hair transplants specifically are gaining in popularity? Yes, because it's, uh, the more patient friendly the, the procedure is, the more uh, people who would like to do it. So it is very, because uh, 25 years ago, now, now maybe 28, 30 years ago, when I started with hair restorations, the only procedure you have with uh, hair transplantation was a strip surgery. Mm, so and that's quite old school, isn't it? So yes, it's very strip old from school. The scalp and... Yeah. and you can imagine that nobody would have to do it, uh, want to do it, unless you are having very big problems with hair loss or baldness. Mm. So the, and I, the techniques uh, are... And I think we're going to go on to talk a little bit more about the... the uh, and I think we'll talk a little bit more about the differences between those as we go on. But how, how many hair transplants in a year would you say you normally do, you know, sort of discounting COVID? Uh, no, now, with COVID, we do more. <laughs> but uh, because everyone sits at home and wants to... Oh, really? It. Seriously? Yes. So uh, we are doing around 1,000 uh, procedures per year. Oh my goodness, wow. Um, and I know how time consuming it is. So that's a lot of hours that you're, that you're doing it. Yes. So uh, the, 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 because it's uh, so patient friendly, they can uh, uh, leave uh, for home, drive the car uh, after the procedure. <clears throat> there is no uh, downtime. So it's, uh, it's a lot of women uh, say to us, uh, uh, well, giving labor to my son was more, far more <laughs> far more traumatic and far more painful than this one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, well, that's a, an interesting benchmark, certainly. And so anyway, tell us a little bit about your technique. So you're the creator of the hair stem cell transplant. How exactly does that work? And what's your method for therefore transplanting the hair? Yes, uh, we developed this technique uh, for, maybe you've heard that disaster happened in the Volendam in the Netherlands. Uh, mm -hmm. where when 150 people, uh, but that, uh, young people were burnt. So mm -hmm. uh, they were burnt on top. So we would have to have an, uh, a method where we can preserve the donor area. So what we do is hair is that material, the surrounding tissue contains the viable tissue. That's called the follicle. The follicle mm -hmm. contains also the stem cells. These stem cells are responsible for hair growth. So what we discovered is that you don't need the whole follicle re to regenerate hair growth. And the second one is on the side of the hair root and not underneath the hair root. So what we, do, what we do, we take out only a very small part of the follicle, we put it in the fertilizer, and that part will be transplanted back. That part which is transplanted back will regenerate the new hair. The part which is left behind we also regenerate new hair. So we make from one hair, two hairs. From two That's hairs, amazing. So, so basically you're, you're only taking part of the follicle, which is why I think you exactly. refer to it as the partial longitudinal. You've got another name for it, haven't yeah. you? The, 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 the uh, scientific name is partial longitudinal follicle unit transplantation. 
So nobody can remember. So that's why we call it hair stem cell transplantation. I think it's, it's so much easier for all of us, but it, it's fascinating because it, exactly as you were saying, you know, traditional techniques involve taking a whole section of the scalp, dissecting that, moving it, or rather transplanting follicles from one site to the other. So you're always sort of just moving, moving the hair around. I mean, what are the other advantages to, I suppose, your technique versus those, those more traditional methods? Yes, the main, uh, main advantage is that, that, that we preserve the donor area. So we can mm. use the same the donor, donor area being where you're taking Exactly, the, the donor area where from. we take out the stem cells. We preserve the donor yep. areas uh, in such way that we can uh, harvest there again and again and again and again. So, and without so you can repeat scars. this procedure over and over, can you? Yeah, we can, we can. That's why uh, with that, this procedure is... Uh, 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 whether it's for people who has also an, a small donor area like burn victims, but also mm -hmm. women, uh, well, uh, they are not uh, uh, with a fond of scars, especially not in the skull. So we mm -hmm. can preserve the donor area so nobody will notice that you have been transplanted. Exactly, because I mean, particularly with so sort especially of also in modern young people. hairstyles, we don't want the scarring. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's another question. What is the average? age that somebody's coming for these hair transplants now yeah but now uh, between 25 to 55 but my all my youngest uh, person i, I mean is, 25 seems quite young for a hair transplant yes but with the current method with our method we can preserve the donor area so if the the uh, the hair loss is proceeding we can use the same technique five years 10 years 15 years 20 years later because we preserve the donor area. Therefore, mm -hmm. this technique is especially mm -hmm. suitable for young people because they are not uh, totally bald, but they're facing a progression of hair loss. So that's why we, 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 mm. uh, we use uh, this technique uh, uh, mainly also for young people. <clears throat> and, and interestingly, as, as Anna Maria was saying as well, you know that there has been such a, an uprise in hair loss, particularly with that younger generation. And I think what's really interesting is that our lives are, are sort of becoming slightly more delayed in a sense. People get married at a much later age uh, now than yeah. they used to. You know, their careers go on longer. Maybe they have children at a, at a later stage of life. So actually, by the time that hair loss starts manifesting, sometimes you feel probably a bit too, too young to be experiencing it in a way, which is why I guess you see 25-year-olds for this. Yeah, the society has totally changed. Uh, 50 years ago, you um, you go uh, uh, with that you go uh, with that from school. You're going to work. You get your your partner when you're 20 years old. You're going to marry. You get your first child when you're 25. Cares when you're bald at 30 years old, so because your children were already five years, six years old, and you have your partner. And um, uh, so yeah. it's uh, the the the, uh, the society changed uh, approximately 10 years. Nowadays, everyone still have, goes to have yeah, their it's, career. It's so they, they want to have the study done first, and they want to, of course, they have they want to have not one partner, two partners, three partners. They, they want to first enjoy life before they get settled when, when they are thirty. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's 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 the current society. So uh, uh, so they travel a lot. Yes, like yeah, and then where they get married when they are thirty. They get the first child when they're 31, 20, uh, 32. And then, yeah, uh, before the 20th and the th between the 20th and 30 years old, yeah, hair loss happens. So, of course, they want to do something mm. about this hair loss. So, that's why we see a, long, a lot of young people between the age of 25. And, and to tell me when. And tell me a little bit about sort of the, the commonly asked questions. I mean, how long does it take to perform this? How long does it take to perform the hair transplant? Uh, well, we start at 7.30. And then mm -hmm. uh, we uh, take out the grafts in the morning. Uh, then we prepare the recipient area at around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And then the afternoon, we are implanting the stem cells again. So we are finished at 4 or 5 o'clock. Wow, and it's it's very time consuming work. I know from having seen some of the of the uh, sort of results of, of what you do as well. This is all done under local anaesthetic, isn't it? Yes. So we are, we're using a special kind of anaesthetic. 
So we, uh, we, we modified the whole procedure of uh, anesthesia. So we only use a very small needle, uh, which is used for insulin uh, application for diabetes. Uh, the, these needles are so small that you almost don't feel anything. Oh, lovely. That sounds nice because actually I think if someone has a needle phobia, then this is probably not, not the treatment for them. So nice to know that they're, they're very, very tiny needles. Yeah, um, you, you, mentioned doing this, you, you mentioned doing it for women as well. I mean, how is it a very similar procedure? Because um, I suppose, as, as you also said, women experience hair loss in, in different areas as well. And often it's a case of the hair thinning rather than actually losing it in a specific region. Yeah. So we treat around 20% of our clientele are women. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, of course, their, their, their expectations are far higher than men, because when the man is totally bald, they're already satisfied with 100 uh, grafts or 100 hairs. Yes. Well, with women, they want to have a full head of hair when they're 18, and <laughs> it cannot be accomplished even with our method. But of course, we can uh, uh, concentrate on certain parts, then we can increase the density there. And then your appearance are, is already different. Mm. It's, it's definitely something that uh, I think you're right. We have very different expectations of possibly. Is, is, it, is it true that you can look at how you're going to lose your hair in later life by looking at your, is it your maternal grandfather or your paternal grandfather? Does that, does that stuff sort of uh, hold any truth? Yes, that, uh, because it is, of course, that's why it's called androgenetic. androgenetic. Mm -hmm alopecia. Uh, it is genetic, <clears throat> but it's not like uh, when your father is getting bald, your mother is getting bald, your, yourself is going to get, to get bald, or your grandparents, uh, your grandparents are getting bald, so you're getting bald also. <clears throat> it's, it's something it's personally, but you see that in some families, hair loss is more pronounced than in other families. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, exactly. yeah, but it, it's uh, sometimes uh, very difficult uh, to explain that, yeah, but my mother is, uh, uh, is, uh, has a bunch of half a hair. My father still is, is 70 years old, has also a lot of hair, but I, I'm, uh, since I'm 20, I don't have any hair on my scalp anymore. Yeah, that's typical. It can be very cruel to fate. It happens, yeah, so. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, gen uh, it's definitely true. Gen genetic. And and it's when it comes to doing the procedure, um, a lot of hair transplants you have to shave the head. Is is this the case with your one? Because that could be quite traumatic for the patients as well. Yeah, especially if you're in women, uh, we always uh, we don't uh, shave mm -hmm. the, the the hair for and on top, but only on the on the uh, on the back where the donor area is. Because and I think the, men maybe can sort of, you know, rock a, a sort of short back and yeah, sides for a long yeah. time, but women would, would never shave their hair, I don't think. No, they won't shave the hair. And the, the men, the, well, some, some celebrities are very, very, very keen of having the, the, their hair shaved because then they are a little bit anonymous. So nobody recognizes them when they go on the street. <laughs> it's, it's true. Well, it's like Anna Marie was saying, you know, you only have a few seconds to make a first impression and then when it comes to repeating the procedure how long do you have to wait until you could re repeat it i mean how long will the results last for one yes the, the result will last for your whole life because uh, the, the the stem cells are coming from an area which is not sensitive to the male hormone so mm -hmm. whenever i uh, will uh, implant them on top of your nose or in front of your in between your eyebrows it will always stay for your whole life but um, right, they, they won't yeah. die at any point. No, 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 they won't die. Yeah. So. And and then what, why would you then need to repeat the procedure if if the follicles are always going to be alive and well? Yes, because uh, 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 like I said, it's uh, the hair loss is sometimes progressing. So if if someone is totally mm -hmm. bald on top. It's uh, we cannot uh, whether we we cannot uh, transplant everything by in one time, so we have to be in phases. Our record, mm -hmm. our record is around uh, eleven times. So he comes back uh, once in wow. a year, uh, one week before Christmas, 
and then uh, he will uh, he has to put some hairs in between because he wants he doesn't want to have uh, whether the, someone seeing that he's balding. Yeah. I suppose in that way you're chasing the hair loss around the, the scalp a little yes. bit, aren't you? But you yeah. can never quite predict, I suppose, where it's going to where the hair loss is going to occur from. No, no, we cannot predict, unfortunately. <laughs> Be a very rich man if you could. Um, yeah. and, and finally, what, what about maintaining the effects of your hair transplants? I'm sure there must be a lot of at-home care and sort of solutions and supplements that you have to take, maybe to keep the hair strong and, and sort of fun functioning at its best. Dr. Uh, Anna Marie uh, knows how to preserve the existing hair, but uh, every hair loss is continuously. So that's why every treatment you're doing to preserve, preserve the existing hair is only temporarily. So, and a lot of men, mm -hmm. maybe 99% of all men are very lazy. So they want to do, they won't uh, go to, to do, yeah, taking a pill is even sometimes too much effort for these men. So they, are, they mm -hmm. want to have it at one time, get it done, and then they come back after two, three years, get it done again, but they don't have to pre uh, take any medicine or preserve the existing hair. So my experience with any type of, uh, of treatment, especially the painful ones, but for, for example, finasteride, minoxidil, everyone uh, knows that these uh, the medicine is only working temporarily. Do you stop with this medication? Mm. The hair loss will continue. And yeah. in, my, in my experience, that after two or three years, they don't want to use it anymore. It's different in women, but in men, men are very, very, very lazy. So they do, after two years, three years, they don't want to have it every, every day. They have to get it in the scalp. So it's, it's and they don't see, they don't see the, the result because it only inhibits and uh, that inhibits the pro progression. It doesn't stop it. Mm. So that's why mm -hmm. they come to us after two, three years. Yes, I tried everything and it doesn't work. Well, it works, but if you stop with this medication, then the hair loss continues. But even with our exactly. procedure, we can restore the whole scalp. That's not the problem. But if there is still existing hair, not our transplanter, you have to, uh, to, to, to tell them that eventually they will also losing their existing hair on top. So mm. after five to mm. 10 years, they have to return to get uh, the, this, uh, the, the, the other uh, areas covered. Yeah, I, I think what all of you have in common is that none of the things that you're promoting or, or that you do are a one-off. I mean, you know, whether it's the work that Anna Marie does, whether it's the work that Belle does or all yourself, you know, all of this, you know, our hair is maintenance at the end of the day and, and yep. it's no sort of one-stop shop just to, to keep it looking completely perfect forever. So, um, okay, we'll, we'll all be booking in with you when the time comes. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Gay. That was you're fascinating. Welcome. And I think we all learned a huge amount from you. Lots of referrals coming your way. Um, our third and final speaker is the wonderful Belle, founder of Salon Sloan in Chelsea and most sought after stylist, I would say, in, in Chelsea as well. Um, welcome, Belle. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank um, you. Belle, I mean, I would say that, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, lockdown has given us this whole new appreciation of our hair. Um, and, and definitely sort of what it takes to maintain it. And what, what effect do you think that lockdown has had on, on our hair, but, but also us as individuals? Well, I think you, you know, we wear our hair every day. We look at ourselves. And certainly for me, my, my hair affects my mood, my personality. So if I wake up, mm. my hair looks great. I feel good. And if I wake up and I've got a bad hair day, I think, oh, you know. So it just makes, you know, life, you know our life, we just feel better. I think mm. we've been multitasking a lot, so probably not as much tension going into our hair, putting the right treatments on our hair, but certainly, you know, looking after it, maintaining it at home, and especially just li listening to, especially Dr. Anna Marie, about looking after the scalp, because that has been a lot of issues that have come up during the first lockdown to now, mm. about how to look after that, because I think if your scalp is healthy, then that is the great foundation for what the hair will grow from 
and you know to maintain this really healthy head of hair I just you know there's been lots of hair you know people have lost their hair I think because of stress through to the dry scalp as I've just said through to it being dry dehydrated split ends and breaking so we've just mm, been I think the scalp has a lot to answer for actually all three of you have mentioned it and it's it's such an important to take away from this whole webinar yes but actually, actually we can say it's all about hair but actually probably it's all about the scalp and then we'll get the great hair as a result of it, you know. Um, but I, I totally agree. I, I feel very unfull together if my hair isn't sort of looking looking great. And I think, you know, only with Zoom meetings and socialising and webinars and everything, it's it's really driven home, actually, you know, sort of to, to all of us, I think, how how important our hair is. I mean, all, all three of you actually have great looking hair. So you're, you're flying the flag for this webinar, which is great. Um, but, but maybe let's go back to some of the basics as well. What, what are the sort of simple everyday things we can really sort of integrate into our routines um, that, that will keep our hair or our scalp actually in sort of peak health? Yeah, I think what we've tried to do is to educate our clients is to look after their hair, their scalp, the way that they would their skin. You know, we're, we're very much used to putting a face mask on or exfoliating our, our skin. Let's do that to our hair and to our scalp. I mean, there are some wonderful products out there, very easy to use at home, simple. You know, I've got my favorites, which today, you know, the pre-shampoo, they go on dry hair. They, you don't have to damp your hair. Mm -hmm. the, the, they are just, just really simple. And, you know, locking that moisture back into your hair. Your hair becomes- What does a pre-shampoo do for us? Well, a pre we'll, we'll detox the hair. Again, it comes back to what we talked, the panelists were talking about earlier, a detox. You know, the, the, the Sizzly uh, pre-shampoo mm -hmm. uh, purifying mask, really easy to use, you know, nozzle application, you know, apply it through your parting, massage it into your hair, comb it through to the ends of your hair. It detoxes the hair, prepares the hair so it's ready to add a treatment and moisture back into your hair. So our mm -hmm. hair, again, like our skin, starts to look more youthful, younger looking, bouncy, shiny, glossy. We, we want all those, those things to, to, to feel great about ourselves. <laughs> Exactly. And I, and I love the idea of massaging it in exactly as Anna Marie was saying about, you know, the importance of getting that circulation going. And, and actually, if you're taking the time to apply this product, then it's the perfect time to then do a little bit of scalp massage at the same time. And, and I think you really do see a difference. I mean, actually, it, I, I love that you also say, much like Anna Marie, you know, that it's all about treating your hair the same as your skin, you know, having that similar routine. And what I, what I found very interesting about lockdown is how so many of us have up the ante when it comes to our, you know, the, the products that we're putting on our skin, on, on our faces, um, you know, sometimes with slightly detrimental results, people can go quite, quite overboard with it. But w would you say we've done the same for our hair? Have we embraced this as an opportunity to up the ante with hair products? Or is there still a bit more that we could be doing, would you say? Well, I, I think definitely, obviously, with the scalp and also strengthening the hair, especially for, for women and, and for men, you know, that the hair gets weaker around the hairline. We, we see this, I suppose, mm. especially for women spending more time on their hair for Zoom meetings, we're probably blow drying this a bit more. So strengthen that hair. Again, there's some great fortifying serums to, to do this. So I, I do think people are investing in their hair more than they would and it becomes part of their their weekly routine you know we're consistently trying to mm. educate our clients to maintain their hair in lockdown and between salon visits so that when you do come back and we are open we've got a great head of hair to be able to work on which is great just makes exactly it easier Makes everyone's life easier. And interesting what you say about the, the hairline as well, because I think you're right, when we are sort of camera facing, we're very concerned with the, the sort of hair immediately at the front, aren't we? Probably the, the back of our hair is, you know, it's either in great condition or it's a mess, I don't know. But how, how can we be strengthening and sort of looking after that hair, you know, sort of to, to stop it from breaking? Well, again, always apply, applying a mask, a regenerating mask. And also, which mm -hmm. I really like, is the uh, revitalizing serum from... Um, sizzly which is just a little pipette drop it on a couple of times a week massage it in it really really has has worked for me and and for a lot mm. of our clients we've seen great results because I think that's where our clients especially women notice that the hair is weaker you know they see the fringe mm. area the temple area look, look looking weaker 
or their hair as we get older starts to age like our skin I never really mm. understood it when I was younger of my clients saying to me oh my hair's breaking it's hormonal what could they do what they, what can they take home to, to use at home and also again which we spoke about earlier was supplements you know I I, I love the Viviscol Pro um, supplements and we've seen I was going to ask you if you if you rated supplements I've heard yeah. great things about Viviscol I've never actually used it myself but I, I know hairdressers <laughs> swear by it yeah, but again, they are an investment, but clients, you know, have seen good, good, great results from, from it. So, you know, th those two of strengthening the hair, getting the hair stronger, because whatever else, you know, you do to your hair, a great cut color just becomes easy for you to manage when you go home because you want to mm. be able to it's all very well we do in the salon but you've got to be able to manage your hair uh, at home and as I say you're wearing it every day you're looking at yourself every day and you yeah just you want to get that luster that shine that gloss back into your hair it looking stronger thicker or all, all mm. the things that we that we want it's maintaining it in a very low maintenance way it's just becomes part exactly of that's exactly what we all want right now and I mean talking of maintenance I mean I think hair coloring is, is one of the things that many of us in, you know in lockdown suddenly sort of had a had a moment with you know realizing that we didn't have the access to it um I guess until the salons open and I think we're all hoping in a few days that we'll have an announcement about that but in, until we can get back into the salons are there any sort of quick hair tips for, for extending your your color or, or hiding the gray hairs yeah I think um but I mean that is just been the worst thing that a lot of our clients came back to us with so what we developed was a professional smudge which was a bespoke color package for our clients and most professional hairdressers will keep a record of what color they've put on their clients and through you know technology social mm. day clients do get in touch with us and we put a, a package together that they can purchase online and really we're just trying to educate them just just to sort of do their part in their hairline the you know the temple areas don't don't break not so much the back mm -hmm. area of the hair but just with your color the drops on no one sees it on zoom anyway <laughs> <laughs> just with a disposable glove just smudge it in to, to the roots obviously this is just an all over color it can't do your highlights for you but luckily mm. fashion and trend today is hair looking a bit more rootier um, exactly so and it's great that you're still hand holding clients even though you know like you say the salon is closed for now it's it's yeah. lovely still to be able to offer that sort of support and yeah. you know psychologically our hair color and not being able to maintain that does you know really affect us so I think yeah. it's, it's a wonderful tip what, what about the sort of because there are some amazing sort of at home products you can buy as well aren't they if you yeah. can't get your actual sort of bespoke color Yes, and also we recommend a sort of semi-permanent colour. But just use your base colour. I mean, everyone thinks they know what their colour is. Always choose a shade lighter because otherwise they can be, go on a bit dense, a bit too heavy looking. And try to use a semi-permanent. They will last eight to 12 shampoos. So you're not going to damage your hair or over process it. So when you do come back to the salon, you know, hopefully that there isn't any mistakes and mm. there are also some great you know temporary colors just the wow which is a powder color which you can just paint on l'oreal have the magic read color wow is amazing oh, it's brilliant with the double-ended brush and it's a powder so it gives the hair a bit more texture as well it only lasts one shampoo Mm. But, it, but it is it is great and um there are you know the magic uh the l'oreal magic touch which is like on a mascara wand so if you do want those few highlights and choose a light color you can just paint paint those on if if, if we are worried but um that there are you know just get in touch with your salon they would they should have a record card and they should advise you of what mm. to, to use so so that you don't make a mistake and you can go you know get retail ones from you know your chemist on on the high street as well and um, mm. I mean scalp aside I actually wonder if this sort of lack of hair coloring and hair styling might might actually be doing good good things for our hair and lockdown much like we say you know a lot of women aren't wearing so much makeup now I mean 
you know, may, maybe it's it's the detox that we've all needed for a long time. Well, some people have embraced their grey hair, surprisingly, and it is quite fashionable. And it looks it's, it's great. true. But they, and know. actually, I think it's really nice to have that point of reference, whether whether it is positive or negative. It's, it's good to sort of know actually that that you know all that hair color that you're investing in is something that is genuinely important to you. It's it's like you know you, you would also like to know what you look like without Botox. You know, just so yeah. you've always got that benchmark and you can go, okay, this this is this is something that I appreciate sort of yeah. going in for now. Yeah, I mean, do Dr. Anna Marie also spoke a lot about hair extensions and. You do some amazing ones at Salon Sloan, which, which I tried as well, the hair tapes. So maybe yeah. you can tell us a little bit about those and, and sort of how they work, maybe to minimize hair damage or yeah. anything else we can do to, to sort of prevent that hair extension fatigue. Yes, well, it's interesting again listening to Anna Marie because hair extensions, the bombs, you, I, I sort of feel for me, they've damaged hair. I've seen it. So I was quite cautious about doing, mm -hmm. doing them because I don't believe in doing anything to a client that I wouldn't do, do have done myself. So when Invisalign, the, the hair tapes came out, I was, let me, let me try them. And they are fantastic. They are a game changer, I think, in, in the hair extensions because each tape, and they're probably an inch to two inches in width, they come pre-prepared or with their glue on. And it, it, you are just sandwiching your hair, a fine section of your hair between the two. There's no heat applied to them. And what's great, they've got a nine month to a year's guarantee. So every sort of six to eight weeks, you move them around your hair. Once your hair's grown, mm -hmm. six to eight weeks, and you've you can see, you know, your regrowth, you then place it in a different area. And we only ever really recommend four to eight into the hair. So it's putting not as much stress on the hair that would cause the breakage. And so they've been great. We and, and like we were saying earlier, it's all about the front of the hair as well. So it's nice you can just get get that volume into the yeah. front. So when you are on Zoom, it's, yeah. it's all there for you. And we do it to create sort of volume and to give the hair bounce. The blow dry lasts longer. They look mm. really natural. You can tie your hair up. They, they just, they don't damage the hair. And I think that's one of the key things. I mean, I've tried them now for four years and I, I, I think they are brilliant to mm. fit the hair. So, and, and also, which is quite good with them, they come... Um, with different colors so if you wanted as an example with your hair try some lighter pieces underneath you know the balayage effect you could have mm. them that they come slightly balayaged or highlighted so it's a lovely introduction to color if they're a bit you know, yeah. nervous for some younger people that don't color their hair that have the extensions it's you can play around with them it's, it's true for boring people like me you can suddenly get some color in and be quite sort of daring and adventurous <laughs> your hair's super glossy and shiny so you're lucky <laughs> oh it's my, my dyson air wrap i mean the, the extensions um, definitely help you you look sort of more pulled together quickly which i think is key but but very quick final question Belle, before we sort of finish yeah. what are the other sort of sos tips that can get us instantly sort of looking camera ready for, for when we do unexpectedly need to jump on a zoom call or, or webinar yeah i I, th I think well one of the keys is, is to when you do blow dry your hair blow dry it well and properly and then there's amazing hair accessories accessories around today everyone's putting a bow in their hair a hair headband i like the mm silk hair ties the slip one so hair up in a ponytail it can look quite messy but you know just style style the front an easy up bun a braid even if it's going back to adding a treatment into, into your hair you know to, to, do a braid put your treatment in and, and a little braid in your hair so you're that's a good idea in. but just style the front you know a little bit of lift on the crown I, I think it's, you know, with a, a little bow, again, that just let your hair dry. If you are drying your hair, let it dry about 80% itself and mm. then dry it. So less heat on the hair so it won't damage the hair as much. And just focus on the front area of, of, of the hair. I think less is more. I, I totally agree. I mean, my, my saviour for these Zoom meetings has always been lots and lots of dry shampoo and then one of those Alice fans at the front. And yeah. I'm always blown away by how many compliments I, I get considering yeah. my hair. I haven't seen shampoo I mean, for days. Dry shampoo it's funny. is really, really good um, because it gives you that bit of volume and, you know, the edge. Mm. 
the extra day for, from your hair. I, okay, I totally agree. Belle, thank you. That was so, so helpful. And I think we've all taken away a lot of very practical tips from, from you as well. So thank you for being here tonight. Um, and, and thank you to, to all of you, in fact. I mean, that, that takes us um, very neatly to the end of our webinar. And um, let me just say, um, firstly, a very big thank you to our speakers. because I think actually all of you packed so much information um, into this discussion. And, you know, all of you have armed us with some really practical Roots to um, looking after our hair and maintaining it. You know the things we can start doing from now, or even the procedures, as as with Dr. Anna Marie or, or Dr. Go, that we can start thinking about for the future, or at least when we get out of lockdown. But I, actually, I think what all of you have shown us, particularly, is that you know maintaining and, and taking pride in our hair doesn't have to be a, a thing of vanity. It is it is genuinely important, um, if not just for our overall health, but but for certainly our our self esteem and our sense of self worth. Um, which we certainly ought to be investing in right now. Before we finish up, um, and we've got a couple of audience questions that I need to get over to, um, can I just quickly remind everyone in the audience, there's a quick questionnaire for you to fill out when you finish. Um, it just enables us to send some really helpful takeaways from this evening over to you tomorrow. Um, plus it will automatically be entered into a draw to win an amazing selection of Sisley hair ritual products. I think there's a shampoo, conditioner, serum, oil and mask in there. So it's really something not to be missed. Um, and as a small thank you for attending tonight's webinar, there's also a 15% off code for all Sisley hair products, which we'll be sharing in the uh, group chat at the bottom of the screen. Otherwise, we just need to remember Masterclass 15, so capital M and it's all one word. Right, okay, we're now going to go to some Q&As. Um, right, who are we going to start with? Any advice for pregnancy hair? I have danced off for the first time ever and I'm not sure how to deal with it. Um, Dr. Anna Maria, I wonder if that's one, one for you to take in the first instance. Um, yes, well, the, all women who are pregnant experience changes in the quality of their scalp. It all comes down to the scalp, why our hormones are changing. Probably I'm, I'm hearing dandruff. I don't know until I see it. It sounds to me probably a bit too much sebum production. So I would say again, what, when I say to make it layman language, a bit, the, the scalp is probably a bit too oily. Okay, that usually is what causes dandruff. So I would mm. say a good quality clarifying shampoo. Neutrogena makes a very good one, by the way. Um, and just use is that. Is that the clear gel one? Yes, the clear gel. It's just to yeah. help everything sort of balance the pH of her scalp. Balance, balance the pH of your scalp. Um, and unfortunately for those nine months, you just have to put up with it. Great thing is when you're pregnant, you do actually have wonderful looking hair. So <laughs> it doesn't matter about the dandruff. <laughs> But yeah, I would say. I know, just, I was going to say, actually, you get incredible hair growth from pregnancy, don't you? All of those hormones running around your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would say just that. And it is out on any cosmetic products on the hair because dandruff usually is too much sebum, too much oiliness, to put it simply. So that's what it is. Mm, that's super helpful. And this is one that Belle can probably take. Is there a way to wash thinning hair? Is head down and not head back? better I think that, that question is supposed to be um, that, that does, there's no special way other than use a volumizing shampoo or, or a bodybuilding shampoo which, which are which are really good but always use a little bit of conditioner on the ends I think people sort of shy away of using a conditioner if they think they have fine hair but use volumizing um, shampoo and really just rinse rinse your hair give give it a good good rinse and obviously again a root lift when you're when you're drying it but don't don't mm. put on because then I think you can overload the hair too much yeah I agree I have very fine hair and you've got to be very careful what sort of products you you put on it so you're not weighing it down as well and really rinsing it properly um the, a question for you dr go is there an optimum time to harvest stem cells for men my son is in his teens and would this prevent genetic baldness uh no no but, uh, uh, when in the teens uh that, that's quite young but um uh, there are there are a lot of people who want just want to prevent that they're getting bald so they come at an early age but the minimum is around 20 21 years old and then the, the, the hair loss has to be already quite progressed. But there's okay. not an, an ideal uh, age for this type of procedure. 
what's the youngest that you see people for this uh, treatment if, if they uh, don't have sort of ferns or okay or alopecia? so my youngest people with uh, androgenetic alopecia uh, that's the male pattern of baldness is 18 years old wow and the okay. oldest is 83 so that's quite We're different with you for life <laughs> I know, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> um, but, another uh, quick one for you, Dr. Go. One more. Uh, do you shave yeah. the area where you place the new hair? No, no, no. It's not necessary, especially not in women. But in men, we, we always do. But in women, we always uh, uh, try to place in between existing hair. So it doesn't have, uh, need to be shaved. But it must be so much Excuse me? more complicated than men having it's hair. Yeah, is it more complicated, more complicated to do it for women? Yeah, it is a little bit com more complicated, but we cannot uh, uh, shave the hair of a woman. <laughs> so yes, exactly. Yeah. I don't think you'd have very many happy patients. No, I um, we don't. <laughs> question for um, Dr. Anna Marie Is there a supplement you would almost universally reckon, recommend to women to encourage thick, healthy hair? As I said before, uh, of course, Viviscal is amazing, Viviscal Pro. But I think iron, I mean, mm. just one thing I would say, iron, iron by tin, iron, <laughs> iron, yeah. iron, iron again. <laughs> well, actually, and, and not just for hair, great for everything. Exactly, exactly. So that's a universal. Um, one. <laughs> we, we were also mentioning yeah, the, the Viviscal, somebody asked for um, the name of that. Um, Belle, do you have any tips for going grey naturally? Because I guess that's quite a hard one to manage, isn't it? Well, it, it depends. You know, how, how exactly do you go from... Yes, I, I think, obviously, you have to try and get a bit of a regrowth. So coming out of lockdown probably is one of the better times to do it. Then you would just put some finer lights and low lights into the hair. So you would try and tone the, the, the coloured hair down and you would mm. just subtly put some very very fine lights in it so you wouldn't get that two-tone band of your hair coloured and your natural colour. Also semi-permanents because they wash out they will just tone the grey gray hair down and then you could probably go for a different style a different haircut so to cut a lot of the old colour out of, out of your hair so it is um and, and that way you've got more of a talking point as well if so you know so someone just doesn't go oh you've you've gone gray you can just say no it's, it's a new haircut yeah 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 we've had some clients do it from the first lockdown you know it's it's a brave move but sometimes you're ready for it it's, it's true i think there's a lot we can do under our own steam but i also think you know it's, it's also helpful to seek the salon or, or your stylist or your colorist advice to do this as well so that you you're being handheld again as you do it yeah. um, another quick one for you bell i've read that wrapping your hair in a towel after washing it weakens the hair is this true no no it's not as long as you i always say to my clients and everyone comb your hair when it's wet with a conditioner or a treatment on don't don't just rinse it without combing it with a conditioner on and then wrap it in a towel because then it will come out knotty. As long as you've mm. combed it through with a conditioner on and then wrap it up, that, that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's asked if Dr. Go treats women in London for hair transplants. I can answer that one. I know he yes. does, but I don't yep. think you're coming here. Are you coming to London anytime soon? Yes, uh, I hope so. <laughs> it depends on what we <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, my planning is in April, so April okay, May super. already, yeah. And if, if anyone wants any referrals um, to any of our speakers here tonight, you can just tick the box on the form that you'll, you'll find when you come to leave the webinar and we can make all the introductions. Um, Dr. Anna-Marie, can you recommend which laser hair cap is best for at-home use? Is there any one that you love? Um, yes, I mean, I, you know me, Francesca, I'm very, I really don't like saying this is better than the other because it sounds like I promote things. However, <laughs> okay, so I, mm. I want to... Okay, want you're, you're not promoting anything. I'm not working for any company. Usually, um, I would say, read the technical details. The one that has the highest energy density, that's the one to go for. So go for high energy density. Also, as a general rule, they're not cheap. So if, if you find a laser light treatment cap that's two to 300 pounds, it's probably not working. 
Okay. Okay. What 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 you sort of price are we looking at? We're talking one to two thousand pounds for mm-hmm. for something that will actually do something. Okay. And and are these best sort of bought from clinics or can you find them on I don't know Amazon? Uh, I'm not sure about Amazon, but you don't actually have to buy it from from a clinic. Okay, just th- there's an excellent um, article that compares, for me, they're the top five on the market and it's um, the WWT online, okay, WWT online. And it um, very often compares top products uh, for well-being and health. The recent one has the top five ones you can get on the market. All those five ones are really good. Okay, and wonderful. I That's very helpful. Directly from the manufacturer. I mean, Capolis is one that I really like, but please don't think it's like I'm getting any money back from it. But Capolis is one of the best ones on the market. <laughs> no, I think sometimes people just love your advice because you've obviously tried so many, and I'm sure you, oh, yeah. you would it's, know the best. It's one called Capolis, and it's roughly two thousand pounds. Capolis. Okay, wonderful. Um, does anybody have any supplements they recommend to take for healthy hair being a vegetarian? I mean, Anna-Marie, that, this comes back to your iron, still suitable, obviously. Exactly, uh, iron. Um, if you're a vegetarian, I would say iron isn't enough, because especially if you're a vegan, okay? Because most probably you lack more nutrients than just iron, which is very important for healthy hair. Let's not forget being into skincare, um, skin as well, okay? It will eventually reflect also on the quality of your skin. So if you're thinking only um, hair, since another p- panelist mentioned it, yes, Viviscal Pro is amazing, okay? But you would need to be happy to compromise and take a supplement that actually has nutrients that you don't have in your diet. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. You need to take a supplement that actually has animal protein in it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, that's that's tricky for the vegetarians then. Okay. Go just for iron. <laughs> iron is good. <laughs> Agreed. Um, sorry, I'm going all the way to the bottom of the questions. I saw something else come up. Um, maybe, Belle, this is one for you. I very dry curly hair. I like the idea of oil. How would you recommend using oil on curly hair? Yeah, uh, after you will also just use a good treatment to really moisturise your hair. And then when, it's, when you've towel dried it, use um, a serum, an oil. I, I particularly like the Precious Hair Care oil from Sizzly. I even use it on my hair. Use three to five pumps on it and just, you know, in, in your hands, through, through your hair. And if your hair is curly and you let it dry naturally, just twist it so it stops it from frizzing. So just think ropes or dreadlocks and let the hair dry, dry naturally. You can put it on damp, wet, the next day when you get up and it you know it needs a little tweaking again you can apply it on dry dry hair it's good it makes the hair super mm. short. your hair will drink it up it hydrates the hair exactly do it whilst you're on your zoom call yeah um, <laughs> dr go i think this is one for you i've had thinning hair on my sides for many years and now i have very thin hair on the sides would, would your stem cell transplant help or should i be using something and products uh i cannot say you just do it on one area yes we do sometimes do person, one area but uh i have to see it in person because that is uh, not uh, very common that the sides are with uh, less dense than on the top there there are some diseases where the the sides are affected instead of uh the top of the head but i mm-hmm. have to see it done personally mm-hmm. Okay, there's another one for you that's also very specific. If, if somebody had a hair surgery in September, could in November they go on holiday scuba diving? Two months' yes. time. Yes, that's okay. no problem. Okay. They, they not, sometimes they go on holiday and diving within two weeks, so that's not a problem. Oh, really? It, it won't disrupt the sort of newly implanted no, uh, not grass? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Yeah. God, luck, lucky person if they're going to the museum scuba diving yeah. anytime soon. Um, just a quick interruption, sorry, Francesca, for the wonderful person who was vegan. I just remembered, and I'm so sorry, I don't want to, to stop the flow, but I guess there'll be no, more please. people with the same question. A very un- interesting supplement is also palmetto oil. Mm-hmm. And palmetto oil, I wasn't 100% sure. I just checked to see if it's okay for vegans. That's why I didn't, and I've now confirmed it. So palmetto it oil, 
palmetto oil is amazing together with iron for vegans to take as a supplement. And I'm so sorry for interrupting. I just, uh, no, not at all. That's super helpful. So did you say palmetto oil? No. Yes, palmetto oil. And it's okay, okay for vegans. Okay, that's really useful. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think the thing is, you know, there are so many sort of vegans, vegetarians, there's so many different forms of nutrition now. I guess we need to, to cover all bases if we can. Um, Dr. Anna-Marie, what, one more for you, I think. Um, someone is undergoing a surgery, which will leave him with a scar across his scalp. Are there any techniques to encourage hair regrowth through the scar tissue? He's, he's obviously concerned about the hair regrowth after, after the surgery. Okay. Um, any of your techniques? Would, it would be a very interesting discussion to actually have with Dr. Go as well. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure so you'll both have really interesting ideas. Anna-Marie, from a, surgical, a non-surgical perspective, is there anything you could do to sort of help help that hair regrow sort of correctly? So to help hair regrow, it's not something you could address non-invasively, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to have an invasive approach because you need to help those follicles. Depends how disrupted they are, but that's why I think Dr. Go, Dr. Go's technique is very interesting because he can actually, I guess from what I understand, use even a traumatized follicle. Yes. So yes. I think it's more yeah. his his specialty. I, I could help with something non-invasive, but if the patient, if the person asking is considering something that is actually traumatized and there's a scar, I think mm. what Dr. Go mentioned is a better approach for that. I mean, that I would refer him to Dr. Okay, Go. Okay, so it, it, <laughs> Yes, so because Dr. we all- okay, well, What we, are your thoughts? Yes, uh, we also uh, treat a lot of uh, uh, clients or patients who had an, um, uh, uh, a part which has been uh, uh, damaged by uh, with that, uh, uh, in the, with the, because of cancer. How do you call it? Um, uh, with the um, post chemotherapy, do you mean? Yes. With, no. Oh, but radio, also, radio, radio therapy. Radio therapy. Right. Yeah. So there is a, a very big spot, which uh, uh, where there is almost no, no uh, hair growth anymore. We can restore that as well. So. Yeah. Okay, so, so would it be the same technique that you do with your normal hair transplant, but just being yes. very precise about where you put the exactly. hair? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, I guess, yeah, that, that's sort of the most bespoke application, isn't it? Um, okay, well, I think that might be all of our questions. Oh, actually, uh, I have just, I've, nope, okay, we, we've answered that one as well. Okay, um, yes, I think we're good on the question front. If anyone has any further questions, obviously we'd be delighted to introduce you to, to all of our speakers, should you wish, tonight. So again, do just um, do indicate on that form that you'll find. Um, but I think that's as much as we have time for tonight. So thank you once again to our amazing panelists. You've been complete superstars and um, we're, we're really grateful for all of your brilliant advice, all very bespoke but yet yeah, all very complementary and holistic at the same time which I think is what what we all want from our hair right now um, to our audience a huge huge thank you for joining us and um, for giving up your Tuesday evening to spend time with us we appreciate it and I hope you found tonight very inspiring and very insightful um, we'd love to see you at all of our future talks and webinars so if you're not already please just register your details on our website it's thebeautytriangle.com and we hope to see you again um, I think that's it thank you everyone on our yeah. panel I don't know if you want to say a quick goodbye all right all, all at goodbye. the same time bye thank you for your attention <laughs> and your time yeah. Thank you very much. Bye, bye. You, bye. bye everyone thank you again for joining us see you soon see you, see you soon bye Bye. Bye.